What is happening everybody, Jeremy Lord here and welcome to another YouTube video. Uh, today's video we're going to go through something a little bit random, uh, a little bit more niche, uh, and that is basically how to draw tubing in Photoshop. So a few people have asked me this, um, it's part of one of those kind of cyberpunky things, you've got all these kind of tubes going everywhere. Um, so we're going to go through that today and it kind of looks a little bit something like this if you kind of check it out. Um, we've got all these kind of tubes in here um, and so we're going to go through that today uh, and show you how to do that. So let's get into it. Okay, so we're in Photoshop now and we've got this image here, um, something that I created a little while ago um, and I purposely left the tubing out um, to kind of show you guys how to do this. So this is all very kind of like Mecha soul -y, um, quite cyberpunk kind of vibe. Uh, it's my usual kind of geisha with, um, you know, demon geisha kind of vibe. Um, so you can see here, I've got a whole bunch of things happening in here. It's quite, the illustration is quite busy. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, I've got all these kind of sketch lines. Uh, and I want to do tubing. So the, the challenge here is basically this, right? So we've got, um, just just made a new layer. Uh, I'm going to switch to black. Uh, and so drawing one kind of tube line is super easy. That's just, you just kind of do that. I've got my smoothing up here on um, 55%. That's pretty high, but because we're doing kind of tubes, that's um, going to be important. The challenge comes when you want to do the other side of the tube and it all just kind of fucks around like this. And it's like, it doesn't look even, it's not exactly the same line. Like you could potentially try and do something like this where you duplicate the line, but it's again, it's because it's not quite the same line. Realistically speaking, it's not gonna work. So this is a big no-no to try and do this. And obviously if you're trying to kind of like sketch it out bit by bit, you're still gonna get all these kind of imperfections. So that's generally not the way to go on something like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do something a little bit weird is I'm just gonna make a new layer. Um, and I'm going to switch to my brush here. I just want a hard edge brush, um, hard round, spacing down to zero, and I want my shape dynamics off. So I'm using a stylus here. Um, so I could potentially have pressure dynamics going on here. If I turn on the print pressure, you'll see that's what happens. This is your kind of standard um, pressing down a very hard, pressing down a bit harder. You get this kind of um, difference in line width. So. Generally, you kind of don't want that on, depends on what you're trying to do, but um, for something like this, just gonna go really standard, hard edge brush, and um, spacing down to zero, and no shape dynamics on it, so we're not getting any pressure sensitivity. And what that's gonna look like is um, something like this, right? So just the one line, so that's all fine and good, but we're not really getting any tubing yet. So I'm gonna to switch to a different color, just so we can kind of see what we're doing. This color will get deleted in the end, so it doesn't really matter. You can go with whatever color you want. And I'm just gonna go in here and draw that tube that kind of goes in here. I've purposefully gone over this because you'll see in a sec that I will delete this and um, move it around as well. All right, so now comes the next step where um, this is where it's all gonna happen. So I've got a bit of a, a line weight here that I've um, done up when doing my um, actual drawing. And what I need to do is just double click on this and give it a stroke. And you can see here that that's just kind of gone in and done a stroke. That's a little bit too thick. So the name of the game here is to match up this stroke thickness here to my actual line width of the outline. So I'm just gonna bump that down a little bit to somewhere where I'm a little a bit more kind of comfortable with where it sits. 10 seems to be good on something like this. So we're gonna leave it like that. Um, and so now I can kind of draw in all these tubes a little bit more easily. And if I just vary the brush size, I'll get thicker tubes or thinner tubes, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, but the outline of the tubes that will be left will always be the same. So we're gonna start messing around here with certain tube lengths and, and widths, sorry. Um, and start kind of drawing these in. So you'll notice that I'm not drawing any overlapping tubes. Um, those of you guys who are familiar with Photoshop will understand why. The reason is this, if I come in and draw this tube now and go over that, because it's all applying to my layer, I'm gonna not get this kind of crossover, um, which is not necessarily the end of the world, but there's a, an easier way to do this. So essentially, I'm gonna make all my layers here and I'll rename these. So these ones are my red tubes. Um, and I can draw as many of these as I want without having them necessarily overlap. Um, 
So as long as I'm not kind of going over and doing any more overlapping tubes, we should be all good to go. So you can do as many as you can here. And again, my smoothing is helping me quite a bit, get some nice kind of clean flow on that tube. It's always going to be a little bit of trial and error. Um, that'll do. Can do this big one here. Doesn't need to be exactly how it is on the sketch. There we go. Now, and again, I'm purposely going over this drawing. Um, so what happens now is I need to make a new layer and I'm going to call this one green tubes. And I'm going to duplicate this effect onto there. Um, so we've just got the same stroke width. I don't need to do it all over again. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to pick a green color. Something to kind of differentiate nicely from the red. I'll drop the opacity down of these so we can kind of see what we're doing and we can see where all the tubes are going. And basically start again. So that one goes up here. I might speed this up now at this stage uh, and just do the rest of the tubes. You get the idea, I'm making basically a layer per tube um, kind of layer, the level of kind of depth of the tubes. Um, and so I'll just bump into a time lapse now and we can kind of see what we're doing a little bit better. Okay, so we've got all our tubes now. Um, we've got four layers of tubes here, blue, green, red, uh, sorry, three layers of tubes. Um, and now what I'm ready to do here is obviously you can see it's all kind of going all over the place. Um, we've got different kind of layers here. So what I can do is I will, um, first of all, rasterize this layer. So I'm gonna bump the opacity back up. Uh, and I'm going to rasterize the layer style. So it no longer has that outline. Uh, and the reason for that is because we're going to start erasing this. So if I do this beforehand, um, you'll see if I put like a layer mask on this so I don't have to erase it and come in here, you'll notice that I get the outline on that. So I want to get rid of that. I want that not to be in effect on this layer anymore. Um, and so I do that by rasterizing layer style and then we're all good to go. So then what I can do now is using a layer mask, you can see that that is now applying my erase or my mask without actually um, shitting on the outline. So I'm gonna drop that opacity back down so I can see the drawing beneath. And now basically I can start, whoops. Wrong layer, that happens more than I would like to admit. Um, so because I've got like relatively thick outlines here, it doesn't really matter how clean I am, I can kind of do a little bit of messing around and that will be um, super clean for me. So what I need to do now is obviously I don't want these to be red like that because that's going to be a little bit shit. So I'm going to select all the red in here and make it so that it applies to the entire layer and basically just delete it. Um, and I think I've just moved it a little bit. No, bit of an optical illusion. Um, so, oh, and see, this is what you get when you're not paying attention. I'm on my layer mask, that's why this has happened. And I can just do this, bang, there we go. Um, so we got this kind of thing happening. Now for good measure as well, what I'm gonna do is um, what you might notice is when you do that, those of you guys again who know Photoshop know that Photoshop never really does um, a perfect job of selecting all the pixels. So you can see 
if I kind of zoom in here, I'm going to get a slightly kind of reddish tone happening in here. So these are all kind of like leftover-ish red pixels that have happened. Um, so what I need to do is go onto this, lock the transparency, which is this little kind of checkerboard up there, um, make it black and then just make sure that that is all um, that kind of black color. So that has basically locked my transparency and it's gotten rid of the red. We've just got um, nice levels of kind of black and gray here. And that just means that my tubing is gonna look a little bit more clean and real. Um, so yeah, so basically now what I need to do is just kind of go through and decide which tubes go kind of in front of what. I wanna get a little bit of a volume, gonna get that kind of tangle going. Um, so I need to do the same thing to these two layers. So right click, rasterize layer style, and we get rid of all this stuff. And then on my green, go select the magic wand, similar, get rid of all that, and then do the same thing on my blue. And get rid of all that. Um, so we've got a little bit of a mess happening now, uh, but I just need to apply Layer master this, layer master that, and we can start going to town on this. So it's just going to mean I need to be a little bit more careful about what's going to happen. So I might just, in order to, for me to see what layer I'm actually working on, on my blue tubes, I will actually make these um, blue again. And so we're just going to go over to here, bump that up a little bit so we got blue. There we go. And then green. Same thing's gonna happen. Do it a different way. There we go. So we got green, black, um, and you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna do it to the red ones as well. Um, and this is more just for me to kind of see what I'm doing and know which layer I'm actually erasing from so I can kind of test it all out. So for instance, I want this tube, let's say, um, to be behind this like weird mechanic arm that's fixing her arm. So I'm gonna to go to my blue layer here on the layer mask and I can get rid of all of this on a layer mask. Again, it's important not to erase this. Try not to work destructively whenever you can. Um, and because these are gonna be made black again, this overlap of weird kind of blue to black is not gonna to matter too much. Um, so it's coming from behind that. Might make more sense if it's going behind this green one um, but then in front of the red one. So I switch the red layer here and go bang like this. So you can kind of see what I'm, where this is all heading uh, and what I'm trying to do here. Um, it's all going to kind of tangle around and, and look a little bit more kind of nice in the end. Um, so we got red here. Let's make this red go. You know what? This red's going to go behind everything. So erase that and oops this is why you need a layer mask there we go and then the blue here is gonna go behind the green and again you can kind of see where all this is heading so this is just gonna allow me to get that kind of nice feeling throughout everything um, and then for the connections here, I can just erase all of this stuff down here. And I might need to kind of fix things up a little bit um, as I go as well. Um, I want to make a mask on this guy so I can get rid of this as well. Make sure the tubing is nice and clean. Always make sure that you're hitting your layer mask and not your actual layer as well. Super important, something that I as you have seen, forget to do quite often. So let's bring these back to whoops, black now uh, and lock that. Shortcut for locking, by the way, which doesn't always happen on my keyboard, depending, is just your forward slash. So you can see up here, if you look, as I press forward slash, it kind of locks or unlocks. Um, so that's just a quick way without having to go up to there and then fill and fill.
Now I'm ready to add a few kind of little finishing touches and details to this. Um, obviously this isn't all finished, I need to do still a lot of um, stuff to like these bits and all kind of connecting and erasing all the tubing, but you kind of get the idea here. So um, at this stage I can literally just, you know, play around with this and add in some little kind of details onto here, like add on some, some patches or whatever the hell else. Um, I feel like to um, complete this kind of illustration and get all the tubing looking nice and um, cyberpunky at that stage. So um, yeah, that's basically it. It's kind of a whole illustration here. It's a little bit of a mess, but um, that's essentially it for our little kind of tubing tutorial. And that's it for today's uh, tutorial, guys. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. Uh, if you did, a uh, like would be super appreciated uh, and hit that subscribe button as well. Um, there is a way to do this in Illustrator as well, um, which obviously I haven't covered here today. It's a little bit long and convoluted, um, but please let me know in the comments down below if you would like me to cover that in another video. Until then, thanks for watching and we'll see you around.